Today's lab is going to be geologic time. And um, so for the first parts of this, you're going to be looking at exercise one, part A. And in these, you're given these block diagrams with all sorts of different rocks and rock types. And use your principles of relative dating, meaning superposition, cross-cutting relationships, inclusion, stuff like that, to figure out which rock is the oldest, which rock is the youngest, and make sure you include things like the fault that's right here, and you will list them on your lab here. Remember, superposition says we list the oldest at the bottom and the youngest at the top. And so that's gonna be your first few things that you work on. Now, your next questions are going to be in reference to this cross-section of the Grand Canyon. So we're looking at the Grand Canyon, the Colorado River would sit down here. Here's the west side, here's the east side, and this is showing you a bunch of different rock formations and uh, the time periods that they come from. And you will be asked questions like, um, what is the oldest sedimentary layer in the Grand Canyon? What is the youngest formation? What is the oldest Paleozoic formation? Um, you'll have to figure out um, um, which, uh, one of the questions is what formations comprise the Cambrian system? And remember when we talk about systems, that means what rock formations are from that particular time period. So you're going to be um, answering those questions related to um, the Grand Canyon. Now in this lab, you will also then go to exercise two in your lab manual. And in exercise two on page 21, it lists what's called this conodont data. And conodonts are these really weird little um, tooth-like fossils that are excellent index fossils. They actually used to also be used quite a bit in oil exploration. And what you're given is data of where conodont fossils were found in this um, area right here that's shown in that illustration. And Question number 18 says, um, uh, what does it say? It says, question one on page 21 of your lab manual lists the occurrence of conodont species. Plot the range zones of the different species on the graph provided with the stratigraphic section on the next page. So here's our stratigraphic section. And then we're going to have these conodont species. Three have already been plotted for you. So for example, what this is telling you is this conodont Streptogenathodus brownvillensis was found in rock unit 15-1, 16 16-1, and 16-2. Here you can see, all right, in sample, uh, let's see, sample, 13 was done. Let's go to sample 16-2, Brown Valensis. Sample 16-3, this conodont S simplex was found. So here's 16-3. I'm going to put a little dot right there, and I'm going to say this is S simplex. Let's see if S simplex shows up anywhere else. No, I don't see it listed anywhere else. Well, what about this S wabanensis? So I'm just going to write S wab for that. And this S wabanensis is found in 16.4. It's found in 16.5. So I'd be like, all right, there's rock unit 16.4, there's rock unit 16.5. So I know at least this conodont lived during these times, and then you continue to plot it for as many of these rock units as it's found in. So that's what you'll be doing for that particular question. Okay, so then question number 19 
um, you are going to be figuring out um, isotope ages and what you first do is you figure out the average for these, right? So remember, figuring out averages, you add all of those together, divide by however many of those numbers you have. So this one, you'd add all of those, divide by one, two, three, four, five, six, and you write that down in sample average. Then one of the questions is going to ask you to figure out the radiometric or numerical age of that and I don't actually know what those answers are, I have to calculate them, but let's say your numerical age or your um, uh, sample average came out as being 0 0.04770. You would then follow this line all the way across to where you hit this black line, then follow it straight down and that gives you the age. So that would be 300.5 four million years old. Now, like I said, I don't know if that's the actual number because I haven't calculated them yet, um, but that's how you figure out that question. And that's going to be, I'm uh, having trouble reading upside down. So that's gonna be what happens in question 20. Um, now question 22 says use the conodont data you plotted with the stratigraphic column and the numerical ages you calculated to suggest a numerical date for the boundary between the uh, Carboniferous and Permian system. And the Carboniferous Permian boundary is defined as the first appearance of the conodont species Strepnodathodus isolatus. So you'll come all the way back here to where you plotted all your different conodonts, you'll figure out where that isolatus one showed up, right? And let's say it was somewhere like up here. Well, you'd figure out what's your age of these two rocks and, or maybe these two rocks, you'd figure out where you have your numerical ages and then use that to estimate the uh, uh, numerical age of that Carboniferous Permian boundary. As always, if you have questions, just let me know.